Hello, and welcome to the Valpo family. My name is Adam Kloss, and I am with the OneCard and Parking and Transportation Office. This is your guide to campus services for graduate students. During this tutorial, you will learn the various features and uses for your campus ID card, as well as the services provided by our Parking and Transportation Office. As a graduate student, I am sure you already have a solid understanding as it relates to a college ID card and probably parking as well. So I'm just going to put a little Valpo twist on both of these topics. Without further ado, let's get you started on your incredible journey here at Valpo. We will begin with your campus ID card. Here at Valpo, we call our campus ID card your one card because it is truly the one card you will ever need during your time here at Valpo. Before we talk about some everyday uses of your one card, I want to highlight the three main accounts on your card. The first account is your bookstore credit account. This account allows you to charge any course related items to your student account when you present your one card at the time of checkout. Second is your dining dollars account, which is your on-campus meal plan. Third is your Crusader cash account. This particular account allows you to use your one card as a debit card for purchases both on and off campus. Let's talk about some everyday uses for your one card. First and foremost, your one card is your official form of university identification. Your card will also allow you entry to various events on campus, most of which are free. Some examples are athletic events, football games and basketball games, theatrical performances, and even concerts. All you need to do is present your one card for admittance. You will also use your one card as a key card for building access. Your card is pre-encoded to provide you access to academic buildings, your residence hall if you will be residing on campus, the after hours area of the Hari Union, as well as the fitness center. Your one card will also be used as your library card to check out reference materials at the Christopher Center Library. Another everyday use of your one card is utilizing your dining dollars meal plan or Crusader Cash account. Finally, you can use your one card to pick up packages at student mail services. If you will be living on campus, your mailbox will be located at the Hari Union. No packages or mail are delivered to the residence halls. Student mail services is located in room 145 which is on the first floor in the corner of the union that faces the residence halls. When it comes to picking up a package, we created an in-house app that will send you an email notification when a package arrives and is available for pickup. For those of you who will have an on-campus mailbox, you might be thinking, well, how do I know which mailbox unit is mine and what is my combination? Do not worry. To find that information, you simply log on to your DataVU account and go to the My Profile link, which is located under the Academic Profile header. There, you will find information related to which mailbox unit is yours, along with your combination. You will keep your same mailbox unit your entire time here at Valpo. If you ever need to send a package, Student Mail Services has all of your needs. Whether you need stamps, envelopes, boxes, or shipping tape, our Student Mail Services staff are happy to assist you. Located just down the hall from Student Mail Services is the bookstore. Now, we talked earlier about using your one card to charge course-related items to your student account when you present your one card at the time of checkout at the bookstore. Please also keep in mind that any non-course-related items such as Valpo swag or a license plate holder cannot be charged to your student account per federal regulations. Do not get upset at us, we're just trying to follow the rules. To see what you have charged to your bookstore credit account, you just need to log on to your DataVU account to access a detailed summary. When it comes time to purchase your course textbooks, you do have the option of renting a textbook instead of buying it outright. Please keep in mind, though, that not all books are available to rent. To confirm which course textbooks can be rented, log on to valposhop.com. Now, if you do rent a textbook, you will be required to use a credit or debit card as a form of collateral in the event you are so fascinated with your book you somehow forget to return it at the end of the semester. If you would like to use your financial aid to cover the cost of renting a textbook, you are more than welcome to do so. However, a credit or debit card will still need to be provided as collateral as you are not able to use federal funds for that purpose. Here at Valpo, we do realize that you have a number of options when it comes time to purchasing your textbooks, which is why the bookstore provides you the convenience of purchasing your course materials online and having the bookstore staff bundle your order for you. Then, when you arrive on campus, you can bypass the long line at the start of the semester by going to the online order window to pick up your order, with the only requirement being your one card in hand. Another great feature of the bookstore is if a class requires an upgrade to a new textbook edition, 
shortly after you already purchased the previous edition, the bookstore will allow you to upgrade to the latest edition at no cost. I challenge you to find a competitor who will provide you with that great of a deal. In addition to all of this, the bookstore will also price match. The bookstore will price match any new, used, or rented textbook, and they will price match either an in-store or online purchase, provided the item is typically carried by the bookstore. When looking the price match, the bookstore will recognize Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or any local competitor's price. Peer-to-peer -peer marketplaces, such as Amazon deals, however, are not accepted. Also, if you purchase a textbook from Amazon or Barnes & Noble and attend a price match, please keep in mind that the book must be sold and fulfilled through those vendors. When it comes time to actual price matching, the bookstore will accept a screenshot, a real-time image on your mobile device, or a hard copy receipt as valid forms of a competitor's price. If you have already made your purchase elsewhere, do not worry. You have up to seven days to show evidence of your purchase with proof of an original receipt. The bookstore will then award you the difference in price in the form of a gift card to the bookstore itself. Let's talk a little food and move on to dining services. Here at Valpa, we have four standard dining locations to select from. Our main dining location is Founders, which is located on the first floor of the Hari Union. Their breakfast burrito bar comes highly recommended by our students. Second is the Campus Cafe, also located on the first floor in the Union, and is located across the hall from student mail services and next to the games and recreation area. A new feature of the Campus Cafe this year is the Green Fork. You definitely need to check it out. Third is Grinders, which is our cyber cafe and is located on the lower level of the Christopher Center Library. Lastly is the Law School Cafe, which is located at our law school at Wiesman Hall. Some other dining opportunities on campus you might discover are at athletic events and concerts, as our dining staff handles operations of our concession stands. There is also Farmer's Market, which is held in the Union every Wednesday during the fall and spring semesters. Farmer's Market features delicious items as banana nut bread, seasonal offerings, and locally grown produce such as blueberries. Here at Valpo, our dining services operation is completely internal. We do not use any third-party vendors. Our bakers arrive at 4 a.m. to start preparing for the day. I would like to take a moment to recognize a few of our all-star dining employees. On the screen are our three chefs from left to right, Chef John, Chef Matt, and Chef Jim. Between our three chefs, they boast over 116 years of experience in the food industry. Our chefs certainly play a large role in providing meal options that meet everyone's dietary needs. In talking about dietary needs, many students have restrictions on what they can and cannot eat. That is why we have an allergy-free station at Founders that is free of the most common eight food allergies, known as G8. There are also EpiPens available at Founders in the event someone has an unexpected allergic reaction. Valpo is actually only one of two institutions in the country that have EpiPens available at their allergy-free station, so props to us. While we may not have a G8 station at our other three dining locations, we do have allergy-free options available in the event you have a food allergy or try to avoid certain ingredients. If you do have any food allergy questions, please visit the Dining Services Office and they will work with our Disability Support Services Office to meet your needs. Dining Services is social media savvy, so you can keep up to date with all the latest dining news through Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat. Of course, email is always an option as well. As was mentioned earlier, your one card serves as your meal card. Nearly all of our meal plans here at Valpo are a la carte so you only pay for the items you select. That way, you're not limited to a certain number of meals or swipes over the course of the semester. Many graduate students are commuters, and here at Valpo, it is not mandatory that commuters invest in a meal plan. If you are interested in doing so, we do offer a $500 commuter meal plan. There is a 5% administrative fee that is deducted from your original $500 when you sign up for your plan, providing you with $475 to spend over the course of the semester. We do also offer a commuter meal plan special at the start of the fall and spring semesters. If you invest in the commuter meal plan within the first two weeks of the semester, the 5% administrative fee is waived, plus dining services will award you $10 for every $100 you have invested, which brings your grand total of available funds to $550 for the semester. Please keep in mind that you are only able to carry over $100 or less of your meal plan from the fall to the spring semester. Then at the end of the spring semester, whatever amount of meal plan funds you have left over, you end up losing. On Dining's website, they post a weekly menu on which you will find meal offerings at each of the four dining locations, allergens per item, veggie options, as well as weekly specials. If you ever need to check your meal plan balance, there are a variety of ways you can do so. First, when you check out at a register, your balance will be displayed on the terminal. Second, you can check your balance through DataVU. Third, you can use a kiosk called Fill, which is located next to the OneCard office. 
Finally, you can visit the Dining Services office in person, call them, or drop them an email. At any point in the semester, if you want to add funds to your Dining Dollars account, you can do so in a couple of ways. You can find another student who has an excess amount of funds and transfer up to $200 at any one time. Another option is to log on to DataVU and go through a link to add funds that way. Whichever method you choose, please note that your funds will become active on the next odd hour of the day. If you choose to add funds to your Dining Dollars account through DataVU, you will go to the Housing Self-Service link located under Meal Plans and Housing. When you click on that link, it will bring you to this screen, at which point you will select the proper semester. Then, you will arrive at this screen, at which point you can add funds in increments of $1 on up. All the dining information that we are covering is also available in a question and answer format on Dining's website. Another dining-related feature is Topingo. I like to call it Tap and Go, but Topingo is its proper name. Topingo is a free app that allows you to place your order using any mobile device. All four of our dining locations welcome orders placed using Topingo. When you use Topingo, you are able to pay either with your dining dollars or with a credit card. To use the app, once you have the app open, you will select which dining location you would like to pick up your order from. Then, you will place your order using your form of payment. After that, you will receive a confirmation number for your order. A short while later, you will then receive a notification that your order is available for pickup. Once you receive that notification, simply head to the dining location you selected and step in line under the sign that says Pick Up Topingo Orders here. Once at the counter, you will show your order confirmation number to the dining employee who will then present you with your boxed meal. After you have your meal in hand, off you go and you get to skip the long line at lunch or dinner. So Topingo is a great way to save yourself some time if you have a busy schedule. A nice feature with Topingo is that it remembers your order history, so if you are a creature of habit like myself, you do not have to re-enter your order every time as it stores your order history. Now we are going to talk about the third account on your one card, your Crusader Cash account. Your Crusader Cash account is completely separate from your Dining Dollars account. Crusader Cash is an optional account, has no dollar amount required buy-in, funds carry over from semester to semester and year to year, and you are able to use your funds both on and off campus for a variety of uses. For instance, if you have to make copies of notes or handouts for a presentation, you can use Crusader Cash at specified copy machines on campus. We have three facilities on campus that have Crusader Cash friendly copy machines. When you use Crusader Cash to pay for copies, you end up saving three cents per copy. There are a variety of vending machines across campus that accept Crusader Cash. That way, you're not fighting the vending machine that will just not accept your wrinkled up dollar bill. You can also use Crusader Cash while you are getting swallowed at the fitness center. The fitness center is located next to the Athletics Recreation Center, also known as the ARC, and is operated by our Recreational Sports Department. Your one card will grant you access to the facility. All full-time graduate students are automatically eligible to use the fitness center as your membership is included as part of the student activities fee you pay as part of your tuition. If you are interested in using the fitness center, you first have to register and complete a liability waiver on DataVU. To fill out your liability waiver on DataVU, go to the Fitness Center Registration link located under the VU Community header. Once you complete the waiver, your one card will grant you access to the Fitness Center the following day as your waiver information is uploaded overnight. The Fitness Center also provides a number of other services for an additional fee, one of which are group fitness classes. If you anticipate being a regular attendee of a group fitness class, I would recommend you purchase a group fitness class punch card. You'll save money in the end compared to paying for a class individually each time you attend. Some other activities that are offered by our Recreational Sports Department and are payable with Crusader Cash are swim lessons, your intramural team entry fee, as well as a CPR course fee. Our Recreational Sports Department employs quite a large number of students throughout the year, whether at the fitness center, serving as an intramural official, or a building supervisor at the ARC. If you are looking for part-time employment and enjoy sports and fitness, you might want to contact our Recreational Sports Department. One of the services that the OneCard office provides that is payable with Crusader Cash is passport photos. For $10, you can receive two glamorous 2-inch two by 2-inch photos of yourself. Whether you plan on spending a semester studying overseas, intend on traveling abroad for fun, or need a headshot for a resume, we can take care of the photo aspect for you. If you are interested in applying for a passport, the Valparaiso Post Office is the nearest location that can complete that process for you. As I mentioned before, Crusader Cash can be used both on and off campus. There are a number of local businesses who have partnered with the university to accept Crusader Cash as a form of payment at their location. There are a few things to remember, though, when using Crusader Cash. You are not able to exceed the balance on your account, as you cannot accumulate a negative balance, and you cannot use Crusader Cash to purchase alcohol or a keg for your weekend party, tobacco, or a firearm. 
This is the current list of our off-campus merchants. Just as a reminder, the business has to be a part of the program to accept Crusader Cash. If you walk into Walmart or Target and try to pay with Crusader Cash, the cashier will probably ask you, Crusader what? On the OneCard website, we list all of our off-campus merchants, their physical addresses, hours of operation, as well as links to their Twitter feed and Facebook page. So the next question is, how do I add Crusader Cash to my account? There are several ways you can add funds. The first is to use a kiosk called Phil. Phil stands for Payment Headquarters in Location. Phil is a kiosk located outside of the OneCard office that acts as a reverse ATM. You put cash in and those funds are instantly loaded onto your Crusader Cash account. We also have Phyllis on campus, which stands for Payment Headquarters in Location Law School. Phyllis is located on the first floor of the law school in the vending area. Fairly soon, Phil will accept credit and debit cards as well as coins, which will make life more convenient for you. The second method is to add funds by way of cash or check at the cashier's office in Cressman Hall. Your deposit will become active within an hour or two. Third is to go through DataVU and add funds using a credit or debit card or by withdrawing funds from a checking account. Fourth is by calling the phone number you see on the screen, press option three, and pay with a credit card. A couple of things to keep in mind. When you use a credit card through DataVU or by calling the phone number, there is a convenience fee that you will be charged. Also, when you deposit funds using DataVU or by calling the phone number, there is a 48 to 72 business hour waiting period until your funds become active. If you do choose to add funds to your Crusader Cash account through DataVU, you will simply go to the Deposit to Crusader Cash link, which is under the Financial Information heading. When you click on that link, it will take you to a third-party service. That third-party service is Tuition Management Service. This is the next screen that you will come to, and it is at this point you can add funds using a credit or debit card or a checking account. When you use a credit card or debit card, the convenience fee will be displayed prior to you finalizing your transaction. That way, if the fee is more than you are willing to pay, you can back out of the transaction. If you withdraw funds from a checking account, then there is no convenience fee you will be charged. If you happen to misplace your one card, we do offer a temporary ID service. If you do lose your card, please report it immediately. There's nothing preventing someone from finding your card and spending any funds you may have or accessing buildings. If you misplace your card during business hours, please contact our office. If it is outside of business hours, please contact the Valparaiso University Police Department. Either our office or VUPD can freeze your card and issue you a temporary ID. All of your information and benefits carry over from your original one card to your temporary ID. The only transaction you are unable to complete with a temporary ID is pick up a package from student mail services. You will have up to 48 hours to find your one card. If after that time you are unable to do so, you will need to purchase a new one card for $15 from our office using cash check or Crusader cash. Make sure you hold on to your temp ID or else that is another $15. Now students always provide us with interesting stories on how they lost their one cards. One student dropped theirs in the snow, another student down an elevator shaft, and finally the grand prize winner is a student who dropped their one card in the toilet. I did not ask for an explanation in that particular scenario. I didn't want to know. When using your one card, make sure you are sensible about it and protect your privacy. Our full policy is listed on our website as well as in the student handbook. You are ultimately responsible for all activity on your account. So some advice to follow. Do not lend your card out to others. Also, make sure you maintain your card. Well, that ends the one card portion of the tutorial. So we are now going to change gears and spend some time talking about parking and transportation. Let's begin with transportation. We offer a campus shuttle that is free to use and is wheelchair accessible. The shuttle travels along a designated route through campus and is available during the fall and spring semesters while classes are in session. The shuttle service operates Monday through Friday from 7.30 a.m. until 6 p.m. and then seven days a week from 6 p.m. until 2 a.m. There are various shuttle stops along the route so you can hop on the shuttle and take it to class or an event. In addition to our campus shuttle, we also offer a disability services transport service as well. If you are a student who has a permanent physical disability or a temporary one, I encourage you to reach out to our disability support services office and we will then work with our office to provide you with transportation to help make life a little easier for you getting to and from classes. If you decide to use our campus shuttle, I would encourage you to download the Crusader Transit Tracker app. This is a free app that was designed in-house with our IT students and staff that features geofencing. Once you open up the app, simply input your name, select your shuttle stop, the geofencing aspect of the app will recommend the stop closest to you, indicate whether you need wheelchair assistance or not, and hit submit. 
Our driver will then be notified that you've checked in at that particular stop and will expect to pick you up when he or she arrives at that location. Another nice feature of the app is that you can follow along as the shuttle traverses campus. That way, if it is cold or raining outside, you can stay indoors until the shuttle arrives. It usually takes the shuttle around 25 minutes to complete the entire route. Now let's move on to the world of parking. If you plan on having a vehicle on campus, there are a few things that you need to know. First, you must purchase a parking permit. All vehicles on campus must be registered with the Parking and Transportation Office. If you choose not to purchase a permit, your vehicle will be issued a citation, eventually towed off campus, and you will inevitably be put on Snapchat by one of your fellow students. Second, campus is regulated just like driving around the city of Valparaiso. You can be cited for violations such as parking in the wrong zone, parking in a fire lane, parking on the grass, and speeding. If you are issued a parking violation, you will receive the notice through email from parking at valpo.edu. We do not issue any paper citations, so you will not see a printed ticket on the windshield of your vehicle. We also take photos of every violation as well. Third is that parking permits are designated by color, which determines which lots you are eligible to park in. If you are interested in purchasing a parking permit, it is a two-step process. Step one is to log on to DataVU and apply for a permit. You will go to the parking self-service link located under the meal plans and housing or VU community header. Once you click on the link, it will indicate which parking permit you are applying for and also will need to enter all of your vehicle information. Having your vehicle registration with you to complete this portion is helpful. After you complete the online application, you will then need to visit the parking and transportation office with your one card, driver's license, vehicle registration, and form of payment. At that point, we'll issue you your actual parking permit. Something to note, as a graduate student, you may only be enrolled in the evening classes. If that is the case, and you are only on campus after 5 p.m. on weekdays, then you do not necessarily need to purchase a parking permit. After 5 p.m. during the week and any time on the weekends, there are only a select few parking lots that are still enforced. On campus, we have an academic building access policy. This policy, which was recently created by the Provost Council, was implemented from a personal safety standpoint for the campus community. This policy is in effect to only permit authorized personnel in academic buildings and labs in the evening hours. What we want to prevent is having a student in a lab late at night alone and suddenly suffering a medical condition with no one else around. Now I need to mention that this policy only applies to academic buildings, so facilities such as the Hari Union or the Christopher Center Library do not apply. Essentially, the policy is as follows. Academic buildings are unlocked Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. until 6 p.m. Then from 6 p.m. until 10 p.m., anyone on campus with a one card can swipe into and access a building. Then if you intend to be in an academic building between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m., special permission is required. At 2 a.m., campus police will sweep the building and request everyone to exit the building for the night. Access to academic buildings on the weekends will require special permission, depending on the building you would like to have access to. So, if you have evening classes, make sure you have your one card on you so you can attend class. The list in front of you are all the academic buildings that fall under the academic building access policy. Again, some of the larger venue buildings, such as the Hari Union, FLX Recreation Center, and the Christopher Center Library, do not fall under the provision of this policy. So, you might be wondering, where exactly is the one card and parking transportation office located at? Both offices are located at the same location in the Hari Union in room 244 which is on the second level next to the 24-hour computer lab. If you have any questions, you can always reach us at either email address, give us a call, or stop in for a visit. Well, that concludes our tutorial related to all of the features available to you with your one card and services affiliated with parking and transportation. I hope you found this presentation to be quite helpful. If at any point in your career here you do have questions, please do not hesitate to ask us. I thank you for your time and wish you the best of luck as you begin your Valpo journey.